we can heal the planet with ponds. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the teachings of the world's most brilliant pond builders about how to turn degraded landscapes and degraded ecosystems back into food-rich, water-rich, and nature-rich environments. There's a couple caveats here. Obviously, there's more to healing the world than just building ponds. And ponds are certainly not appropriate in every climate because of the evaporation. But if designed well and placed in the right location, ponds can shift the whole dynamics of a landscape from poverty to abundance for both humans and for nature. So come take this journey with me into the awesome world of permaculture ponds. So we are here in Corvallis, Oregon, at the home of the Oregon State University beavers. And actual beavers. Beavers are the world's greatest ecosystem engineers. Sculpting the landscape with their dams, creating paradise ponds and diverse wetlands and bringing great richness, abundance, and biodiversity to the landscape. In this video, we're gonna look at what beavers can teach us about healing degraded landscapes and about fixing our hydrologic cycle and how we can actually mimic the great works of the beavers to restore our own permaculture landscapes and take them from a state of degradation to a state of magnificent abundance. So you can see the abundance of this permaculture design landscape here at Seven Seeds Farm in Southern Oregon. So one of the ways that we design in permaculture is to observe nature and see the cycles of fertility, the watershed, the species, and all of the patterns in which life exists. Beavers are a prime example of a keystone species that's maintaining the hydrology of the whole ecosystem. We need to do work to reintroduce beavers, to protect beavers. But in the meantime, humans can step into our full potential and become the new keystone species for restoring the watersheds of the world. And part of that is learning from and mimicking the patterns of the beavers, like here at Seven Seeds Farm, where they're spreading water across the landscape soaking water in and re-establishing the hydrology that was lost when the beavers were lost from this landscape. Permaculture has a method, and the method that we restore watersheds with permaculture is based upon the brilliant work of the greatest ecosystem engineers in the world, the beavers. Oregon's called the Beaver State, so you can imagine that there was a time when beaver dams like this existed in every little stream and rivulet and river. In fact, before Europeans arrived, there was an estimated 100 to 400 million beaver in the North American continent, where today there's about 9 million left. So this is what the stream looked like without the beavers a deep incised channel eroding the sides with nutrients and water just flowing and exiting out the system. We can look at satellite imagery from just a few years ago and we can see that where the ponds are now all used to look like this. In just a few years, these beavers have built these small dams all up and down this stream. They've gnawed down trees with their huge sharp teeth and then harvested the logs and wove the wood together. These dams serve not only to slow the flow of water, but they're also nets for nutrient flow, where sediment flowing down the stream collects in these ponds, and the wood the beavers placed here decomposes. So this is actually one of their old dams that's blown out here, but they've made these little dams all up and down this stream here. You'll see that these dams, they're not solid, like we think of a dam that holds back water. They're permeable. Water actually moves through these dams. They're just made of sticks that are all woven and tangled together with mud and sediment in between. And so they're not holding back the water, right? They're just slowing the water. And as they slow the water down, and the water then soaks in, turning the surrounding landscape into a giant sponge. Together, between the sediment and the wood, the level of the channel builds up, and the creek is no longer just contained within the channel. 
but it raises up and spreads out laterally across the landscape. Here's where the beavers have raised the level of the channel through their dams and ponds, and now the water is actually moving laterally across the landscape, creating these wetland meadows that are flooded as the water moves horizontally out from the streams. So the beavers create habitat for all kinds of other species, especially building ponds like this, the beavers actually create habitat for ducks. Now, if you know Oregon State University beavers, you'll know that our rivals are the University of Oregon ducks. The ducks would not even have a place to live if it wasn't for the beavers creating ponds for them. So when the water leaves the channel of the creek and spreads out horizontally across the landscape, there's more surface area contact between land and water. So there's more space for water to soak into the ground. That's definitely the strategy that's employed in permaculture design landscapes. So in this farm, water's diverted from creek into this big pond and then when it overflows from this big pond, it then zigzags back and forth across the whole landscape down into other ponds below. A lot of times we think of diverting water from a creek as damaging the ecosystem and taking water for agricultural landscapes. But in this case, diverting water from the creek through this permaculture system here is actually enhancing the ecosystem, enhancing the hydrology, just like the beavers. So here at Cougar Mountain Farm in Saginaw, Western Oregon, We've got an amazing amount of biodiversity increase by having this pond right here. You can see all these different edge species all around the pond. And then in the pond itself, we have aquatic species and fish. And the effect of having open water in this landscape where there's no other open water during the dry season, it provides habitat for all sorts of species to exist and thrive here in this landscape. Cougar Mountain Farm is a forested sponge punctuated by open water storages with biodiversity and a healthy hydrology. We've got seven different ponds throughout this watershed here. They're unlined ponds, so they're built with compacted clay. So there's not a lot of seepage coming from these ponds down into the water table, but there certainly is some seepage and it varies from pond to pond. In a place like this, we've got water storage, we've got vegetation, so between improving the soil, improving the vegetative cover, the sponginess of the soil, and having these multiple reservoirs, we begin to have this real cumulative effect on the hydrology of this whole watershed. So just take a look at the difference in the landscape between the clear-cut industrial forest and the forested Cougar Mountain farm here. So at Seven Seeds Farm, we can see the habitat effects of ponds all around the ponds, the edges. We see a diversity of plants. We've seen pollywogs, salamanders, fish. I just saw a great blue heron fly over. So when the water is infiltrated all throughout this farm, it soaks into the ground and it spreads into the surrounding landscape. The native ecosystem here comes right up to the margins of the farm and is actually integrated in the farm. So the native ecosystem also benefits from this continual recharge of the aquifer, creating a more rich, healthy, fire-resistant forest and creating a more biodiverse and abundant ecosystem. So even in arid areas like this pond in Rajasthan, India, where because of livestock browsing, there's no plants growing around the ponds, we can see that waterfowl are attracted to the open water. There's gonna be a lot of evaporation in hot deserts like this one, which is not ideal but this is a monsoonal climate. So there's so much rain that falls in a short time and so much water flowing across the land during heavy monsoons that large open water bodies are needed to store it for future use. So now in this hot desert environment, they're raising water buffalo, irrigating crops and recharging groundwater tables because of their ponds. This series of ponds in Rajasthan provides seepage into the water table that's directly accessed by people in nearby wells. Just like the beaver, they're creating a network of ponds on multiple drainages throughout the watershed. The alternative here is that during monsoon rains, the water rushes through the drainage system in a heavy torrent and leaves the area. With this series of ponds, there's water table recharge and water for livestock and irrigation. Just like the beavers choose their locations carefully, 
the good sighting of one small dam can make quite a large pond, rehydrating the banks of the lake and creating a great deal of surface area contact between water and land, while also creating water and food security. So what do we have to learn from the beavers? The beavers are changing the entire watershed. They're changing the duration that it takes, the flow of water to get from the top to the bottom of the watershed and restoring ecosystems along the way. They're building up the level of the channel, which then allows the water to spread laterally across the landscape. They're sinking water into the ground in order to recharge subsurface aquifers. They're capturing organic matter in the ponds and woody debris, and they're holding that matter higher up in the landscape instead of having nutrient wash all the way down through the system and out into the ocean. So this stream used to be ephemeral, meaning it only flowed for certain months of the year. After Seven Seeds did all of this water management work here, the stream flow became perennial, meaning it flows all year round. And the downstream neighbors actually reported the water level in their wells going up, and spring flow increased. This is not just coincidence, because there are plenty of people here in Southern Oregon whose water supply is actually drying up. People are moving away because their water is disappearing. But this farm, the water is actually increasing, even through continual long-term drought. And now, 22 years into this water project here, the hydrology of this whole region downstream has benefited from the work on this site, just like the hydrology of all the areas downstream from beaver dams benefit from their work. Beavers are the great ecosystem engineers. And in order for us to return this landscape to its highest potential of biodiversity and biomass, we need to learn from these brilliant creatures. So when beavers were lost from the landscape, it was a great ecological tragedy, and one that we're still suffering from today. That's why I'm saying we need to think like beavers, we need to act like beavers, and we actually need to take the place of the beavers in our design, development, and restoration of degraded landscapes around the world. We need to heal the planet with ponds.